All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today for our next installment of our Family Friday series. Um, today, we're gonna to be talking about student leadership development. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen because we have the Director of Student Leadership Development with us today, Ann Arsenault, who will be chatting with us. This session will be recorded so you can view it afterwards. If you have any questions, please do use that Q&A feature here in Zoom. We'll get to as many as we have time for. Um, but with that, Ann, I am just gonna turn it over to you, you can take it away. I know you have a few brief slides and then we can get to Q&A afterwards. So thanks for joining us. Sounds perfect. I'm going to share my screen and then Heather, if it doesn't come up the way we want it to, just let me know. <laughs> perfect. Sounds great. Is that working? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Ann Arsenault. Positionally, I serve in our Office of Student Leadership Development, which I'm going to share with you a little bit about. Um, and we really focus on ways to get students involved on campus, engaged in things that they care about, and then pursuing different leadership opportunities and their own leadership development. I represent a team in the Office of Student Leadership Development. Um, and we want to just today give you a broad overview of how our office works to support both involvement, engagement, and leadership. So all three of those elements. A little bit about us. I'm seeing if I'm my forward is not working. Hmm, okay. There we go. Um, this is just the mission of our office. It's a lot of words, but basically we're here to support students as they um, live the, into um, exploring themselves, working with other people, working for the betterment of community, and trying to make the world, lowercase world, capital W world, a better place. Um, the things that our office um, is involved in and has oversight for are our leadership development programs and initiatives um, at William & Mary, um, involvement and belonging opportunities for the 475 recognized student organizations. That number is always a little bit in flux, but right now we sit about 475 are student government. Um, one of their big things, as you look at your tuition bills, one of the fees is a $98 student fee and the student government um, represents all the students, but also allocates that student fee money to go back to support student um, engagement opportunities and recognize student organizations. We work with fraternity and sorority life, so we have 31 Greek letter organizations. It's roughly just under 30% um, of the student body is involved in fraternity and sorority life, and our office supports those opportunities. And then our media council and publications. So the TV, um, the radio, the flat hat, all of our media groups um, have some special support that comes from our office as well. For us, it's really about the practice field of leadership. So often we're asked the question, like, what is your leadership program? Um, and I just want to share that our way of looking at leadership development opportunities is really looking at where students are going to get involved and be involved in community and be involved in working on the things that they care about to create positive change. Those will be the places that they are practicing leadership. And those are the primary areas that we interface. We do offer some standalone programs, some standalone standalone workshops. Um, we do a spring semester program for all students called the Leadership Accelerator Program. So that's an application-based program where students can apply to get involved. And then we do a coaching program for positional leaders within recognized student organizations. So we do have standalone leadership development areas, but really like the primary place, particularly for entering students where they will get to know about our office is as they become members in some of our recognized student organizations. And that organization works within our office to take advantage of the services and support that we provide um, to student organizations, particularly in the first year. That's what most students know about our office is the org fair and tribe link. And I'm going to share what some of those things are as well. Um, we do like to make sure people know that we are intentional in how we want to cultivate student leadership development opportunities. So our work is um, all done under a framework that is for leader development and organization success. And what we believe is that we have to be cultivating and working and supporting strong individual um, individual leader development opportunities. So our office puts forward opportunities that support students in that. And we also have to be working with our recognized student organizations to make sure that we are enhancing the way in which our students are engaged in the practice field of leadership. 
relationships. So it's equally important to us to provide leader development opportunities and then opportunities for organization success. And our framework has elements displayed on the screen that support both of those. And we do programming and resource resources around both of those. We believe in combination, the leader development and the organization success is what will help us cultivate positive change, which is at the heart of it, our definition of what leadership is. So that is how we sort of come to define and describe um, leader development opportunities through this particular framework. And it's how students learn a little bit more about our office as well. Um, we, um, one of the things as your student comes to campus, um, I often like to pull back to um, this a Gallup Purdue study um, that is um, the Gallup Purdue Index. Um, that, so the, the Gallup poll people um, did a study uh, with um, Purdue University about what makes for an, ex an, an exemplary college experience. Um, and that data says that there are lots of great things that can make for a, um, for a, a positive college experience, but what distinguishes a average or a good experience from an exemplary experience are um, a deep connection with a mentor, taking on a sustained academic project, and then playing a student part, a, a significant part in a student organization. And so I always like to highlight that when we get to talk about why involvement is important for students and why our lens um, for leadership development is, is primarily through a participation lens in our student organizations is because we know that this that the getting involved significantly in a student organization will be a key part of what um, distinguishes a student's experience at William and Mary or anywhere from being a good experience to being a really really exemplary one. And fortunately for us, we have such a robust. Um, playing field for our recognized student organizations and our students really do take advantage of them and take responsibility for community development for that. But I always like to share that study. You may be thinking to yourself, well, how, how will my student um, find those opportunities? And I'm going to give you some information about like the ways in which they'll be coached and supported to do that. Um, but I often like to give parents and families um, some, the way we are asking incoming students and all students really to think about where they want their involvement to be. Um, we think that there are three good questions they should ask as they come to William & Mary as they try to figure out what they want to get involved in. And we frame those as sort of saying you should look at some opportunities about things that you are curious about. Um, so people, places, causes, um, trends, cultures that capture your energy and enthusiasm. So we try to use um, energy, enthusiasm, and curiosity rather than passion because sometimes there are some um, traditional age college students who know what they're passionate about, but often we're seeing um, this age group really still more trying to explore what that is and intimidated by use of the word passion. So we try to focus on what are you curious about? Then we try to ask them to think about what are things, skills, knowledge, insights they want to develop? Where, are, where is their interest? And then what's something that energizes or restores their well-being? Um, so I, that's the one where we say, you should get involved in something just for fun. Like it is something that you enjoy. It is something that brings you joy. It is energizing you. You don't have to be the expert in it. It doesn't cause, it doesn't take a lot of your time. It's just something that you do for fun. That's often where we see students look at the cheese club or ballroom dancing or salsa dancing, something that they know they don't have to be the best at it. They're just coming in and they are doing it because it brings them some joy and that helps them with their own well-being. Um, one more way to think about it, again, as you're supporting your students who like, I'm trying to figure out where to get involved. We have um, a, some different ways for our students to think about it is we often say, well, if you're, if those three coaching questions don't give you enough, um, we often say, why don't you think about something that you already care about and you want to continue at William & Mary? So that might be um, that you've been a volunteer in different areas or you have been involved in, um, you know, the um, in Relay for Life in your local hometown, something that already exists um, that you're already doing and you want to continue to explore that. Something you're interested in that had never tried. So that's the way you can sort of build some fun into it is taking advantage of these 475 groups and finding something that you're like, I would like to explore that. Like I have never played lacrosse before. I have never um, played on this type of sport team, but 
but a lot of our club sports have A, B, and C leagues. So maybe I'm going to take that on. And then something that advances your academic or professional interests. So a health, um, a health policy club or a pre-law club or a pre-med club, something that supports you in some of the academic um, opportunities or professional areas that you're interested. Perhaps you enjoy debate. That's something that you think you want to have some element of that represented. So those are ways that we introduce how to shop around for involvement to our incoming students. And we train our orientation aides on using this language with the students that they'll be working with, the orientation staff. Um, we're, we're really asking them to think about it in this way um, and how, how they might help support students who are like, I don't even know where to begin. 475 seems pretty intimidating. Um, and it isn't because there's all the time to be able to shop around um, for the organizations. So the primary way, I'm going to give you a few, um, I, I feel like I should breathe too. I think I'm talking a little too fast. So I apologize for that. Um, TribeLink is our student engagement portal. Um, and the TribeLink portal is open to you um, as a parent or family member. Um, so it's one way that we, right now, the students have access to it. They can log in. And I love to have people shop by keyword. Um, so right now, um, you could go in and if you are interested in health, health-related areas, any student organization that has that in both their name or in their description, it would come up. So you could search on performance, you could search on media, you could search on health, any, any keyword to find out, does that group exist? We also have categories um, such as community engagement or performing arts or spirit, um, spirituality and identity. Um, we have different categories that people can search to see. And we encourage students to reach out to those groups, sort of to send a message to say, I'm interested in learning more. Will you have an interest meeting? Will you be at the org and activity fair? Um, but this is a good way to explore, shop around, but do it totally passively. Um, and again, I often say to parents and families, this is another way that you can kind of, if, if, a, if, if a, a student mentions, hey, I've gotten involved in this, you can go look at their tribe link page to find out a little bit more about what is the group about or what are they doing. Today, it's not super robust, but in the coming weeks, as our students return to campus and start to get the details around the events and activities um, that they're hosting, not only is TribeLink an organization database where we keep our directory of recognized student organizations, that it's also the calendar of events for recognized student organization activities. So we will see the event um, portion of TribeLink really fill up in the coming weeks and um, stay consistently sort of high with all the things that are happening on campus campus. When new students arrive on campus, um, we will have two organization fairs that happen during new student orientation. So the, they'll be on the Monday and Tuesday night of new student orientation. Um, and half the groups will be one night, half the groups will be the other night. And that's really the time that our students can come and shop around and meet people and um, sign up for info sessions. Not every group is represented at the org fair. Some groups um, are application-based and it's not appropriate to kind of put them out themselves out in, in different ways. But most of our groups um, try to do a table at the org fair. Um, and then I'll also pause to say we do another org fair in January. So if you have a student who's um, coming in and is just like, I want to get settled, I want to join this one thing, but that I'm going to really kind of take my time. I'm going to like get into my academics. I'm going to get to know my hall. I'm going to do some preliminary things. We will do another mid-year student organization fair in January that we market to all freshmen and sophomores, um, first and second year students and incoming transfer students, so that you don't have to feel like it has to be done in the first week of the semester or you lose your opportunity. Our groups are continually in recruitment opportunities. Um, I also think a great place for our students to uh, land and to ask questions is both their orientation aides and their RAs. Um, those are great people to go to to say, how did you get involved? What were the things that you found? How did you find out about this? Um, and then just paying attention on campus, paying attention to the calendar of events and seeing if there's something interesting to you, paying attention to student happenings, which is our bi-weekly newsletter that goes out that um, shares opportunities that are happening across campus for students. And then just asking people, you might meet somebody in class or they might say they're involved in this or they want to get involved in something. 
tag along for an interest meeting or an info session to see, is that also something that you are interested in? So those are some of the preliminary ways that we um, that we offer through our office. And then also that um, students generally say are the ways the person to person referral or the conversations with the OAs and RAs are often how students tell us the most about what it means um, to to get involved in something. Our office will be represented at um, parent and family orientation. So at the Connections Fair, Student Leadership Development, um, we'll have a table. I, that'll be me. So I'd love to meet anybody in person. And then Fraternity and Sorority Life um, also does tabling at that event. We are typically right next to one another. And the Fraternity and Sorority Life actually brings students to help um, to help support their table. So you can ask questions to students currently involved in any one of our three um, councils of organizations that exist on campus. And then because sometimes fraternity and sorority life feels um, a, a little more complex to people around the joining, um, Heather has put, um, we have two info, info sessions that will happen on the 25th um, with our SLD staff members who have oversight for the fraternity and sorority area. So we will have um, a session during parent and family orientation on Friday the 25th um, with two staff members who have oversight for the community, supporting the community, and they will bring involved students into that presentation as well. I will give a quick heads up because if you have a son or daughter who is um, interested in exploring fraternity and sorority life, I'm going to actually focus on women right now, um, exploring sorority life at William & Mary. Um, our sorority recruitment schedule is early this year, um, and that is because of the way the religious holiday schedule is falling. We don't like to con conflict with the Jewish holidays, and so we are going a week earlier, and we, we know we will get feedback of like, it feels really early to be starting that first um, week of classes. It feels early to us too. We usually start um, 10 days into the semester instead of the first weekend. Um, but our purpose there is, um, is to not conflict with holidays. And this happens to us in the calendar, maybe once every five to six years, we have an earlier than usual um, sorority recruitment process. So um, if you have somebody looking at that, we often get a lot of feedback from parents that it feels early. Um, we can give you a lot of context for um, the joining second semester or joining the sophomore year is a great opportunity if it feels too early for somebody. And we definitely encourage people to find the timeline that feels the right to, right to them. I got a couple more slides and then I'm going to um, open it up to questions as I've sort of powered through um, a handful of things. Um, but what I, I want to share is we, I mentioned that our office does um, leadership programming across campus. Um, we tend to look at what creates the best leader, the national data that tells us what creates the best leadership outcomes for college age students. And um, we have two leadership campaigns that are open up. They are initiatives that we run throughout the campus. And these are ones we want you to know about because they are often different messaging than our students heard when they were um, in high school. And so one of our campaigns that will take place in the fall semester is our No Title Needed campaign. And it's tied to the leadership data that tells us that um, it, position, title, and role is not the only way that you can practice leadership. And so we have sort of two purposes with our No Title Needed campaign. Purpose one is that we want our incoming students knowing that they don't have to wait until they are tapped for leadership to care about something. They don't have to become president or vice president in order to take action in the causes and the communities that they get involved in. It's also a way for us to help our um, students who are in positional leadership that the, if they're structuring organizations that are more flat in terms of access to con contribution rather than being solely held by titled or positioned officers, they're going to have a more effective organization. Um, so helping our students transition from focusing on the title or the role or that they aren't involved enough until they hold the title or the role. That's often a transition for our high achieving William & Mary students coming in. And we want um, any help we can get helping to support that narrative. 
The other one that we focus on a great deal, it'll actually be our first campaign of the fall semester um, towards the end of September, is helping our students understand our depth over breadth initiative. Um, so for us at William & Mary, depth over breadth means that we, we know the best leadership outcomes occur for students when they do a few things very significantly. Um, if I go back to that Gallup data, going back to sort of significant involvement in an organization, rather than trying to do too many things too broadly. And at least at William & Mary, what I find is this, this is often the exact opposite of the message that they have gotten in high school as they prepared to get themselves into William & Mary or um, other schools that they were applying to. So we really want our students to do a few things significantly rather than trying to spread themselves too thin or trying to do too many things too broadly. Um, this is where I often say to students, like, it's great to attend things. Things. You don't have to be a member of every organization to be a supporter or a cheerleader for the things that they are doing. Um, we're often asked, what's the magic number? I don't have a magic number because all the orgs are created a little bit differently, but I think it's just the spirit of being willing to kind of look at I don't have to sign up or be involved in everything in the way that I did it before. And then I'm beginning to learn healthy and good life skills for the long term about what it means to take on some things significantly so that I can have deeper experiences with them. Um, so those are two of our initiatives in the fall and any um, any support you have sort of um, talking with those concepts about your students um, and they'll hear from those about us as we do our campus wide campaigns during the fall semester. One other thing related to um, involvement that I just want to hit on is that um, we we believe at William & Mary that no one should be harmed or demeaned in pursuit of campus life. Um, so we have a very strong and active hazing prevention coalition. Um, some of you who may be residents of Virginia may know that um, last year in July, July 1, a new law went into effect in the Commonwealth of Virginia called Adams Law. Um, so we now are also doing um, some very specific training for prospective members, um, uh, current members, and advisors of some specified organizations that meet the criteria. But our Home Without tra Hazing training will be offered to all incoming students during orientation. And we all, it, it, we say to students, like, we want you to come and participate in that training um, so that you are aware of um, what to look out for, for yourself and for your friends, how to report hazing, and how to be part of this community um, where we just, you know, belonging in community is such an important part of William and Mary that in order to have that experience, it shouldn't be anything where you are harmed or demeaned in doing that. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be part of the team of people that works on um, spreading our home without hazing message. And we just want to make sure that parents are aware of that as well. Um, I just submitted some information to Heather earlier this week, and there'll be some links on there um, that um, you can uh, explore the, home, the hazing prevention website. One of the things that we do share on that, and I think it's a great way for everybody to be a good steward of their own experience, is um, our student organization conduct histories. Um, we make those public and available to people. It's also part of the law that we are communicating with people that those are available um, to people. So the, the link will be in the upcoming newsletter. We can also, you can just search for hazing on the William & Mary website and it'll take you to the page and you can find the link. And we have a resource education and resources section on the page. Um, and there is a section for parents on there as well. Um, and also one, a resource for students on what to look for when you are shopping for an organization. So often that's just a, another piece of information um, that we want people to have as people begin to navigate their own experience of choosing the places where they will get involved. So that, those are my, I don't, I don't even know how many, maybe 12 slides, um, 13 slides on involvement and engagement and how we really focus on this practice field of leadership. So I'm going to stop share and uh, see what we can answer or navigate. Wonderful. Thank you, Anne. And I know that a few folks have joined us at the latter half of your presentation. Um, we had a little a little glitch in our Zoom link and the reminder that went out this morning. So some people joined us about halfway through. Okay. The session is recorded. So everything that Anne shared, we will share with you after this presentation. But if you're just joining us now, great chance to get some questions answered. So I'm monitoring the Q&A function here. And um, I'll start us off with a question. Question. Just, um, you know, thinking about families who are getting ready to send their students off to William and Mary, and, and maybe they had 
really like routine schedules of involvement and things that they were doing they've been involved in for many many years and maybe they're looking to try something new or or something of that nature what kind of conversations can families have with their students pre-arrival to prepare them for exploring some of these new opportunities for involvement yeah that's really where i would um in the the questions that we pose to students around the three good questions about, you know, what are you interested in and curious about? Um, where are there places that you're already engaged? I think asking students to begin to think about where do you think you want to get involved and what would bring you some enthusiasm? What do you think you might want to try that might be new? Um, those would be um, the, the areas that we would want students to think about. The students all receive a resource pack, and those questions that I shared with um, earlier in the webinar are all in their resource guide. And so, looking at that, the 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 resource information that I, I'm not I'm blanking on what the name of what Step calls that Heather. I don't know if you know off of it's their mm -hmm. their virtual resource bag, but it's every or every unit that wants to provide them with some advanced information. And so, those questions are on on there. But really, just saying, what do you think you want to try? Where are you going to be measured in that, right? Some of you are going to have, I find that often I'm talking to parents who you have the son or the daughter who you were worried about getting out of their shell and trying anything like, and then you have some parents who are, well, they're going to try 15 things. So in both of those, how do you like, how do you get to the happy medium of where we're looking for supporting them in depth over breadth of um, trying to find one or two things just to go to meet some people to get connected to it. And then for um, the, the student who's coming in aggressively is like, I'm going to sign up for it all. It, our upper class students will tell you that's not sustainable. So where do you want to start this semester? Um, we did a we did a panel for Step earlier this year, about uh, earlier this summer, probably a couple of weeks ago, and it was interesting. I had about five students who joined me, and they talked about their own experience, and they all sort of said the things they thought they wanted to do freshman year. They kept an open mind, and some of those persisted, but it was the opportunities that they found by getting connected to other people who brought them into things were. The the ones that have actually been the ones they were the most interested in. Right. And, and there, I, I, oh, there's lots of new that will happen, right? There yeah. are lots of new opportunities, lots of new people that they'll be connected with who have unique interests and passions and, and that will be introduced to them. And then maybe they'll discover that they're passionate about something that they didn't have, you know, access or introduction to before. So that's one of the beautiful things about the experience is that there's lots of new to explore. And that's where I often say that's where going to things rather than signing up for things can get mm -hmm. you that like, are these my people? Like I, you know, I, I, I talked to them at a tabling event and then I, I actually want to know more about them. So taking advantage of the places where students are putting themselves out there. You said new and I should have put a slide in for this because we often get the question about like my student has a very specific interest in X, Y, or Z. And so the process to start a new student organization lives with our office. And so definitely um, we have some key steps that happen along, um, along the way. Um, it isn't a hard process. It's open to incoming students. We often say to people, make sure you're checking to make sure that doesn't already exist. Um, I often, um, we have a really robust acapella community at William & Mary, but I often take them down as a joke in, in describing this. It's like, I'm not certain we need a 15th acapella group at William & Mary. So making sure that you've explored the options that already exist before you decide you have to start this new thing. That's one of the things SLD will ask of you. But if what you really want to do doesn't exist, we do bring on, um, it's probably about, uh, it's probably between 25 and 40 new student organizations a year come um, come into play. Um, and so just, if there is an opportunity for a student to pursue something that doesn't already exist. Yeah, that's incredible. I'm not seeing any questions at the moment. So if anyone has a question for Anne, now would be the time you can either put it in the chat or in the Q&A feature here in Zoom. However you want to um, 
get that across to us, then we can we can make sure that we get your question answered. Um, I know you went over the few opportunities at the beginning of the year that students will have to explore the different student organizations. And, you know, again, in um, the, the spring semester, what are the organic ways that students will find um, meaningful involvement over, you know, the experiences you've had with students, talking with students? What are some of those just really organic ways that they may find something that's meaningful for them? Um, I, I think it's usually because they have met somebody and they're supporting them, right? Like that a homemate has an upper class friend from high school and they go to the event or um, they go to a class and the faculty member, the teacher, the professor is talking about this opportunity and students get involved um, through that. Um, so some of the other organic ways are just wandering around campus. There's always something going on. Um, we have a really robust in the Sadler Center, our, our primary sort of student center, um, the, the tabling activity at William & Mary is very, very high. So there is, uh, there is always in the lunch hours and in the dinner hours, um, there are people tabling um, at uh, at like about their activity or their event or providing information or selling information or doing something that gets the word out about their student organization. Um, and then the other piece would be um, just out on the Sadler Terrace as well, or just wandering across campus. You'll wa wander into events all the time. I would also say TribeLink is one of the primary more official venues, but like if there's a group you think you're interested in what they're doing, follow them on Instagram because that's likely <laughs> going to be where they are putting out some of their information and opportunities for people to join in um, and get involved. And then Student Happenings is our bi-weekly newsletter and Student Happenings goes out on Mondays and Thursdays and it captures all the information um, that is, is coming up um, and the opportunities that exist for students so just paying attention there but usually it's a friend right it's a yeah. it's somebody you know um it's somebody from your hall it's somebody you know from high school if you are connected to other people like or a friend of a friend has gotten you involved or you've met somebody in the dining hall and they've said oh i'm doing this can i come along with you um our, our freshman hall communities really do tend to go and support one another as a unit or they go to things as a collective group um and so there are lots of opportunities to kind of reach out to the ra and say like what do you know about this could we get a group of people together to go and just take advantage of going out and doing that yeah and i think one of the reasons i ask those questions is because Typically, I get a lot of questions from parents and families around what are those big opportunities, right? Those org fairs for students to get involved. And I think it's important for families to understand that those more organic ways of involvement can be some of the most meaningful. To be completely honest with you, sometimes those org fairs can be a little bit overwhelming depending on who your student is. Like you're walking around and you're meeting tons of students and giving away things and signing up for things and you have no clue when the meeting is or and then they walk away and it's like, oh my gosh, there's so much going on. Um, but that tends to be the question I get most is when are those opportunities? So I just want families to know that there are so many opportunities that are less structured, less yeah. large scale for students to find a place on campus that's that's meaningful for them, whether it's in their hall, something they saw in student happenings that was really interesting, they walk by a table and because tabling is so robust at William & Mary, they walk by a table, someone snags them in, you know, they're like, come talk, talk to us about this thing. So there are some really great opportunities that um, will happen outside of those large scale things. So if you hear from your student after that first org fair, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed by the choices. What am I going to do? They will find their way through those conversations they're having with their hall and the connections that they make. Um, I wouldn't be as, as, hyper-focused on those large-scale opportunities. They're great for introductions to the opportunities available, and then some of those other connections will happen more organically. Yeah, and and we started offering the January fair probably about 10 years ago for the very purpose of like, sometimes it's too much that first week. That is not that is not the way that appeals to everybody, but by, you know, the, the next year or by January, like I'm, I'm ready to explore mm -hmm. a little bit more. So yeah. that January kind one is no to that, to that point, I don't see any questions yet. So I'm just going to keep asking. Um, Love it. <laughs> 
Is there an ideal timeline for a student finding meaningful involvement on campus? I don't know that I've ever been asked that or thought about it. I think it is student dependent, right? Um, there is, and and you know your student, and and I have I've met many many students. There's there are some students that come in blazing and are, um, you know, they are going to take this on. They know they're already doing it. This is a this student actually just graduated from William and Mary's Law School, but in her but came to William and Mary as an undergraduate in the summer on what was then a very active Facebook group um, for students, she decided she would be class president. Like, so she came in ready to go and, but that's not every student. And in fact, that's much more the outlier. I think many more of our students are like, I wanna get situated with academics. Um, and that's where we really say like, find some connection points, right? Like the way to feel by October, to feel like I'm kind of part of this community is that I have some people I can lean into. I have met some people. Those can often be from the hall, but often if it's coming from something else that you enjoy, whether that is a, you know, a sport club or an interest area or a culture and identity group, finding some people who represent and share with you a love for something you have gives you another network of people that you are connected to. And often that's a place to start. Like if I had any one recommendation to people, it would be don't do all the things, but try to find at least one that you think will be be your thing. Um, and then be willing to admit this was some of the advice from the students from the webinar we did a couple of weeks ago, be willing to admit when that those those weren't your people, right? Like I thought they were going to be my people because this was the thing. But you know what? They aren't actually my, like I have, I've given it a try for a month and I'm not connecting with them. So they, all of the students were like, I just walked away and I found another group of people because I'd met some other people and got connected. So I think it really depends on the students. Some of you have really gregarious outgoing people who are going to take on too much. And some of you have um, students who are more reticent to put themselves out there, have a more introverted approach, and both are going to be successful both aren't going to be successful in the first semester. Like it takes some time to feel, to build the relationships of community. Um, and so just to encourage them to, to keep at it um, and to open themselves up to meeting more people and taking advantage of opportunity. But, you know, I definitely, if somebody is really reticent about even one, that's where I'd push to like, just try one thing. Um, but past that, it will come in their own time. There's typically, we don't, we don't spend a lot of time talking about this with, incoming parents, but then the, the shadow side of getting involved is what we find for a lot of our second semester sophomores and juniors is that they joined a lot of things to find their people and to find community. And then there's this critical time at the end of sophomore year where elections happen and they go from being a member in like five things to be an officer in four of those five things, which is a bad idea. Like that's where we're trying to get the depth over breadth message on. But that happens really quickly is where I don't feel really connected to this group to suddenly sophomore year, I became vice president, but that happened in four different groups. So that is something to be aware of that's coming. And most freshmen can't see that that's coming because it's also new. The group is new. The people are new. Um, and they, you know, they have to give it some time to sort of um, to, to get connected to people in the way we all build relationships. Yeah, I think that's a great message. Every student is different. Families, you'll know your student best and how they maybe embarked on this experience previously, right, of how they found meaningful involvement in different areas of their life. And I also just want to add to, you know, you know your student best, and I'll always say this, if you are concerned about your student and maybe they're, they're feeling isolated, they haven't found someone on campus, you can always reach out to the Dean of Students office. You can reach out to me at families at wm.edu or heather at wm.edu. Happy to chat with you about ways maybe we can support your student if they are feeling um, isolated or they need additional support resources. You know your student best, so you probably know when it reaches a level that they need a little bit of support from campus resources. So just want to keep that in mind as well. Do have one question here. Um, are there any clubs for international students or something similar? 
I am, I am doing what I always encourage people to do because with um, 500 organizations, our groups come and go a lot. And I'm like, I want to make sure that I am. Um, yes, there is an international student association. They just activated again last year. Um, so an international student association um, is one of our newer groups. So there'd be a really easy way. It was either last year or the year before that they came on board. Um, they've existed in a couple different iterations. So sometimes um, some sometimes some of our groups go dormant. But right now we have an international student association. Um, and then as often as not, we also um, sometimes see um, culture and identity based organizations based um, not on an international student experience um, at generally, but based on the culture identity of interest um, or background for the, the students involved. So we have a lot of culture and identity groups that are actually a really vital and active part of our campus community. Um, but in terms of serving all international students, um, the ISA is one. And then most of our international students are also taking advantage of the programming and support that is coming from the Reeves Center as well. Wonderful. Okay. Seeing no other questions, and I think that probably wraps us up. Um, just want to again highlight um, the opportunities that you all as parents and families will have to interact with student leadership development at orientation. So during parent family orientation on that Friday, the Connections Fair, and we'll be there representing student leadership development. You can come say hi in person. Um, and then also they will have info sessions about fraternity and sorority life happening. Um, those exact schedules will be released um, prior to your arrival on campus so you can review the exact sessions that will be available. This is my shameless plug to just let you know if you have not registered for parent family orientation to go ahead and do that as well. If you have any questions about that, you can reach out to us at families at wm.edu. Um, I know that you all have a busy couple weeks as you get ready to send your student to William & Mary. So if there's anything that we can help with in the meantime, Parent Family Programs is here to support you. Um, but any last thoughts, um, Anne? Um, yeah, it, so Bonnie just raised a question about do they have access to all this and 100%. So um, the orientation staff gets trained on how we want to, you know, provide opportunities for onboarding and involvement. And so they will definitely have access to that, but nothing else for me. So look forward to Wonderful. welcoming you and your student to campus and look forward to them getting involved in, in our really rich uh, involvement experiences that exist. Wonderful. Well, thank you for joining us, Anne, and thank you all families for joining us. Hope you have a great day, and the recording will be up probably next Monday or Tuesday. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.